Gegroet en hartelijk welkom. Die regering wil die recht hebben om enig een van je bezittings oor te nemen, van het plaats tot aandelen, als met die rechtvaardiging van wat in die openbare belang is, wat dit ook al betekent en wie dit ook al bepaalt. Dit is kritici een kort opsomming van die nieuwe wetsontwerp op onteining wat nou oorweeg wordt. Maar die regering reken dat gaan bloed oor onteining waar nodig om bijvoorbeeld paaien te bouwen of om grond meer rechtvaardiglijk te verdeel. Dat is niet sommer van links en rechts greep nie. En die man wat so sê is die adjunct minister van openbare werke Jeremy Kroner. En saam met hom om oor hierdie omstrede concept weer te praat is Cornelius Janssen van Rensburg uitvoerende hoof van Afri Sake. Deputy minister, I would like to start with you. Uh, earlier this week, I listened to a radio conversation by Dr. Anthea Jeffrey of the Institute of Race Relations, of course, heavily against this whole bill. And she said there's a, a, some kind of a sinister undertone to this. But from your perspective, what is the real underlying purpose? Good, good evening, uh, Freek, and also uh, hello to Cornelius. Um, I think the first thing that South Africans need to understand is that as we, uh, as we speak, there is a 1975 piece of legislation called the Expropriation Act, which gives um, currently and 150 other pieces of legislation in existence, about 150, which mm. give the president, uh, at least 10 national ministers, all pro provinces and all municipalities expropriation powers. So what we're trying to do here with this piece of legislation is to make sure that those powers to expropriate are exercised constitutionally, so that we're defining a constitutionally uh, uh, applicable process. That's the purpose. There's nothing sinister about what we're trying to do. On the contrary, we're trying to align existing expropriation powers with what we all, I think, agree is a very progressive and, and Okay, and legally that might be the case on paper and as we look at it and so on. But behind it, there are all sorts of other things. I've mentioned some of that in the introduction, but from your perspective, what do you really want to achieve? We want to achieve um, the defining in general law, as the Constitution requires, the property clause specifically um, says you know, the government can expropriate for a public purpose or in a public interest. There must be compensation. That compensation is not just based on market value uh, and so forth. But what it doesn't do is describe the processes that should be followed to ensure that we have an administratively just um, a process of, of, of expropriating. So what we're doing in this legislation is defining basically a three-stage process um, to ensure that there's uh, administrative justice in the process of expropriating, regardless of who's doing the expropriating, whether it's the president or one of uh, ten different uh, national uh, mm. ministers or a province or a municipality. So it's really trying to safeguard the interests, one, of uh, potentially expropriated entities, but also obviously um, to, to, to provide certainty to the state when it's proceeding with, um, uh, in the public interest or for a public purpose, proceeding with an expropriation. Well, with great respect, uh, Deputy Minister, uh, well, forgive me for putting this to you, yeah. but I mean, we know of course that you and your minister are both senior officials of the Communist Party. Yes. And that rings a little bit of a bell about something in, in the past and what happened in communist states and so on. And I just want to put it to you, I read Marx again, saying one of the ten tenets he said is total abolition of private property and property rights confiscation. One of the principles of communism. And also that the government has supreme authority through its total control of land and means of production. Now you can think that the ordinary guy would say, well, these guys are communists. You know. Is this part of their plan? Okay, well, what we are is South Africans, uh, and I'm uh, a member of the cabinet as an ANC member. It's true, I don't deny being a communist. And we are bound by the constitution. Uh, and, and I certainly take the constitution very seriously. And I think the constitution has often been misportrayed. For instance, um, in the State of Nation debate um, earlier this year, the leader of the opposition in parliament said that the constitution says that uh, uh, we have to pursue a willing buyer, willing seller approach. That's not true. The constitution is very explicit, uh, not least in the property clause itself, to say, yes, expropriation can occur. Uh, it says that there can be no whimsical, um, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, appropriation, dispos dispossession of property. I absolutely support that. Where there is an expropriation or other forms of dispossession, um, they must be they're bound by the constitution, um, and um, the the compensa compensation must be paid in the in the case of expropriation. That compensation must reflect not just market value, but other issues. For instance, the history of the acquisition of the particular property, its current mm. use, and a range of other criteria as well. Okay, we will come to that in a moment. But could I put this to you straight? Yeah. yeah. Do you believe in the principle of private property? I believe. Yes, absolutely. Of course. Do you own private property? Yes. Okay. Wat een beginsel is jullie probleem met die wet? Vreek goeie naand en ook aan al die kijkers. Uh, die probleem wat Afri Sake het, is dat voor economie om te kan groei en te kan bloei, het de mens absolute zekerheid door eindomsrecht nodig. Die hierdie voorgestelde wet gaan baie verder als die 1975 onteindingswet. Het probleem wat hier ontstaan is, eerstens wordt die mukpunt van gelijkheid en grondherverdeling nou ook als het doelwit binnen die breer achting van wat publieke belang is bijgebring. Die tweede ding is, hierdie wet gaan aanzienlijk verder als net doodgewone onteinding voor die basis om infrastructuur in die smeer um, op te rig. Die dat is nie net openbare doel nie, maar ook openbare belang. So dit is nou die twee verschillen waar nie na verwees. Die, die probleem waarmee ons sit is, is dat al in rechtspraak nie een klinkklare definitie is van wat behels uh, openbare belang nie, of public interest nie. Het probleem daarmee is, die machtshebber kan bepaal wat is een publieke belang of nie. Maar anwoord al die individie uit as die grote, as deel van die, van, van die publiek en dan sê, jy as individie sy reg is minder waard as die groter geheel van die, van die publieke belang. En op die 18 april van jaar het die constitutionele hoofd daar die beginsel eindelijk bevestig. Het probleem waarmee ons nou sit, as die regering grond wil onteien vir die bouw van paaie en die smeer, waarom word alle type bates in die wet ingesluid. Dit is nie net grond nie, dit is jou kapitaal, dit is aansienlijk hoeveel type van rechten wat jy oor bates kan nie. Dit, dit, dit is basis enige iets. <laughs> ja. Nou, die, die, die probleem wat, wat Afri Sake daarmee het, is eerstens, dit maak die bezigheidsomgeving vir, vir onze sakemanne totaal onzeker. Jy weet nie wanneer iemand naar jou uh, bezigheid toe gaan kom en bepaalde bates wil, wil begin onteie nie. En natuurlijk sit jy met die situasie dat die, die municipaliteite nou die recht verkry om grond te kan onteie. Nou, daai specifieke um, aspect ach ons as ongrondwetlik, het word nie binnen hulle macht in die grondwet omskryf nie. Maar die rest van, van daar die document, gesien in die licht van goed soos die grond, grondskrif op grondhervorming, as ook die, die grondwetlike hoofse uitspraak van 18 april, um, skep een raamwerk waar binnen die staat aansienlijke klomskade aan eindomsreg in Zuid-Afrika kan berok. Goed, ek sal volg met die, met die adjunct minister ook, maar kan ek net hierdie vraag vir jou vraan? Sorry, deputy minister, forgive me for asking this. Vertrouw jy die minister? Uh, ek vertrouw nie iemand in die regering nie. Probleem <laughs> nie is, die, regering. Die, 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 die probleem is, op die einde van die dag, um, die huidige regering het die afgelopen 20 jaar geleentheid gehad om van hierdie land een paradijs te maak en voor elke liewe geleentheid daarvan. Wanneer die minister kom en sê dat hy baat is van individue gaan onteien, uh, verhoog dit nie vertrouwen nie. En interessante ding is, sulke goed onder mijn vertrouwen. Vertrouwen is een van die belangrijkste goed wat de mens nodig het om te kan handel drijf in die economie. Het is een van die belangrijkste goed wat nodig is om werk te kan skep. Dit wat met ons nou geconfronteerd wordt, breek vertrouwen af. Deputy Minister, there are two issues in particular. Who decides what is public interest and what is public interest? Now, I think that's a good question. But first of all, let me say that what Cornelius's problem is not with the bill, the draft bill that's in front of his problem is with the constitution and with the property clause specifically because mm -hmm. the bill is not introducing this notion out of the blue of not just public purpose but public interest it's in the constitution it's in the property clause it so is. if he's if he's got a problem you know he's, he's he's masking his problem with the constitution and the property clause. but at the same time we know in the constitution public interest is not clearly defined no sure but it's it, it's indicated broadly it, it mentions specifically for, for the purposes of land reform as, mm. as one example but also for more equitable access to the country's natural resources is another example but doesn't define it in the bill we also well, I can be a mayor and i can decide well it will be a, a, a more kind of uh, just uh, dispensation if I take uh, yeah. so-and-so's private money from his bank account. Yes, exactly. You could, you could do that. But the whole point of the legislation 
and the Constitution and is that all of these things can and must be tested in, in court, can be tested by court. And we've had a couple of constitutional uh, court cases precisely testing the validity of whether matters are in a public interest or for a public purpose, whether they constitute uh, an expropriation or not. So there's already constitutional court decisions indicating and, and providing guidance to us in this case of the law. So we're not trying to define public interest, but we are saying in this uh, draft bill that um, you must meet the test of of, of public interest or public purpose. You can't just whimsically take property because on a Sunday, uh, sunny Monday you wake mm. up and as a, as, a, as a mayor of a particular municipality you like that particular property or that particular bucky. We're saying there has to be an administratively just process. So you can't just, you can't just take the property. Um, you have to justify it in terms of public interest or public purpose. Uh, you have to consult with the affected parties, all of the affected parties. Um, you have to offer compensation. Uh, if the compensation is unacceptable, um, the, to, to the party, it, it, it can be taken to court as well, and, and, and the courts yeah. can, can, can assess the, 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 the amount, the quantum of com compensation. So this, this is a constitutionally governed uh, country and mm. also a draft bit of legislation. And um, what we are doing, which doesn't exist, uh, Cornelius appears to have a sort of nostalgia for the 1965 apartheid era uh, expropriation act. That doesn't provide the kind of protection you're looking for. What we're trying to do here is pre precisely provide constitutional and court-based protection. Cornelius, I can give you maybe not just from the young minister of Land, but also from us. As a man who is going to read what in the ground is standing, then it looks for me as if it's all too difficult to get away from that point. For example, it goes over the current use of the property, as I want to end word, I can read it in the English. So the history of the acquisition, the market value of the property, but my end from favors, and then the purpose of expropriation. So that laat die grondwet laat voor mij, zoals wat ik om nou lees, reeds die gapings wat die minister nou duidelijk gevat het. Stem eens aan. Die grondwet laat inderdaad daar die ruimte. Die probleem is niet meer die grondwet zelf niet. Die probleem is meer die mensen wat die grondwet interpreteren. En dit is die regering. En hulle doen dit na aanleiding van hulle eie strategie van hulle eie handveste en die smeer. Maar hij sê maar die hoofd kan nou besluit uiteindelijk. Besluit. Wel, die hoofd kan net zo so makkelijk in die guns van een regering se, se, se idee van wat openbare belang is. Misschien kan jy, denk minister, vir ons definieer wat is openbare belang, want het wordt niet in die wet degelijk omskryf nie. Dit wordt nergens in rechtspraak genoegzaam uh, omskryf nie. Probleem... Goed, hy moet dit doen, maar op jou ene sal het waarschijnlijk dier een hoofdbevel in elk geval omskryf moet worden. Dit is soos my ons maar in een constitutionele staat voor te vorder, die hoofd bepaal van tijd tot tijd maar deur sy uitsprake, wat is die omvang? Ja. Die, die probleem waarom ons nou sit is, hulle praat van acquisition, die hoofdse uitspraak van die 18 april het hierdie, ek meen om iets te verkry, is een feit, dit kan nie interpreteerbare ding wees nie. Na die 18 aprilse uitspraak kan dit. Een van die voorbeelden is, die staat kan nou gaan en pizzabate vat en het verkoos gee, en dan gaan hy sê, maar hy, hy as die staat het nie verkry nie, hy hoef nie compensatie daarvoor te betaal, te betaal nie. Kom ons stop jou net daar so nou by die punt. I hope you've written that down. We'll take that uh, in a moment. Was it not a trick? Or was it further? Welkom terug. We ons praat oor die omstrede onteiningswet ontwerp. Nou net voordat ons gegaan het na die handelsnieste, het ons vinnig gepraat net oor die uitspraak van die Constitutionele Hof. 18 april, dit het gaan oor minerale rechten, waar die hof beslis is eigenlijk dat die staat kan in trist grond hou of rechten hou en dan oorgee aan iemand anders te rin. Dit is die beskuldiging wat Cornelius nou gedoen het, moet sê, die minister kan my grond vat en vir iemand anders te gee, sonder dat die staat dat dit, en dan is dit in elk geval heel te maal rechtvaardig volgens hier die uitspraak van die hof. Is, is that the right interpretation? I think so. I'm not a lawyer and not, okay. a not part of the constitutional court. I mean, I think we, we shouldn't muddy the waters on this matter because, in fact, explicitly, both the constitutional court, both the majority opinion as well as the, the, the minority judgment, both said that this was not a case of expropriation. So what we're dealing with in this new bill is expropriation and mm -hmm. how to proceed, in our view, in an administratively just way, doing, you know, uh, uh, making sure that the state has its constitutional um, powers um, to to further public interest and public purpose on the but one hand. But he says you can take from one and give to the other simply like that. 
Yes, okay. If we're talking about that judgment, which had to do with, as I say, with mineral yeah. rights and the conversion of, of mineral rights to new mineral rights and so on, that wasn't in terms of this particular... And that cannot happen in terms of this law? No, one could uh, expropriate, the, the, the state could expropriate land, for instance, for the purposes of land reform and therefore provide it um, to, 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 to new, new users of, of the land. Is that but, a problem? No, because it, it, we were constitutionally required precisely to advance land reform given the history of South Africa. So expropriation is, is not necessarily the, mo the, the most useful or quickest way of doing that. Uh, typically a willing buyer, willing seller approach would be the, the easiest route from both parties. But okay. sometimes there are unwilling sellers um, who are basically gaming the system and seeking, uh, and understanding the state is very desperate to acquire land for land reform processes, for instance, and looking for for for, for compensation which is far in excess of um, of, of 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 the okay. market value, and therefore costing taxpayers. Because we, we must look at it also from the perspective not yes. just of the state wanting to advance transformation, but also the cost of transformation to taxpayers okay. when there are people who are speculatively using their property and. Uh, um, and therefore, the ability I, I to express that, that's the accusation, and I will come to land reform in a moment. But I said, I'll go for you, will throw. The idea is from the ground, wet like a hof. That's the beschuldiging, natuurlijk, van jou and anderen. Is om te say, the hof is ook bezig om te verander, om een lijn te komen die denken van die regering en wordt gemanipuleerd. Say yes, sir. Ik zou niet zeggen manipuleren, niet, maar als bij duidelijke tekent dat die constitutionele of wel in daar die richting begint bewegen. En dat die hoofd met andere woorden eindelijk een werk tegen van die regering en zijn beleid. Dus een grijpende ding om te zeggen. Die implicatie van die laatste uh, uitspraak van die constitutionele hoofd strookt bij hem met uh, ANC-strategie op zichzelf. Um, als die minister grondeinaar, mensen met eindom wil verzekeren, waarom gaan veranderen dan nu niet die onteindingswet? En gaan definiëren bij je nou wat publieke belang is en wat eindom is. Niet. Dan gaan ons naar allemaal ze wantrouwen en allemaal ze vreesen besweren als ons. Kost dat in Eipen? Deputy Minister, do you believe there's a need to redefine or clearly define public interest? I think, I think it's difficult, and I think with legislation, bear in mind that what are we trying to do here? What, the, the focus of what we're trying to do here is define a process, which is not a whimsical process, it's not an arbitrary seizure. It needs to go through steps, and if, if government fails to go through those steps, a three, 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 three process step of uh, investigation to make sure really there's a need to expropriate. Secondly, then to uh, publish a notice of intent to expropriate and the obligation to consult with all affected parties, and then finally, a notice of expropriation with timelines which are relatively generous. One of the comments we've received from the Western Cape provincial government is it's too onerous. Uh, some of these timelines are too onerous on the executive, interestingly coming from the Premier's office in the Western Cape. So we've got to balance the ability of the state to advance transformation. It's, an, it's a constitutional obligation, but at the same time balance the interests of, of, of property owners. So we, and that's what we're trying to do. So we are not trying to define property or public interest or public purpose even in this particular act. What we're trying to do is, is, is focus on the process. But it's other clearly a problem. Of, uh, well, other pieces of legislation, for instance, the Mineral Resources and Petroleum Development Act, um, applicable to, to mining rights and mining interests, will define what constitutes mining rights and what con constitutes property in that respect. Okay. Other pieces of legislation. So we're, we're trying to be an umbrella piece of legislation around the process of expropriation to okay. ensure a just let, process. Let, let's leave that point for the moment. Let's come to the land reform. Yeah. The, uh, one accusation also is, and yes, it's exactly the same sort of thing, is that you are actually trying to speed up land reform because you failed. And it's because of your failure that we have this on the table now. Yeah. Now, I think that uh, land reform has moved extremely slowly. I don't think it's a, pr it's a problem of expropriation or non-expropriation. I think there are other reasons for that. I think that um, the, uh, one of them is, is, is that uh, land restitution, for instance, the majority of, uh, as some critics of this particular bill have pointed out, uh, the majority of those um, uh, receiving restitution or in line for restitution actually prefer monetary the compensation. Money, yes. yes, and that's a problem, I and agree. And others who receive the land failed, 90% of them, yes, exactly. said by your own government. Yes, no, no, exactly. It's something that we concede and something we're looking at. So, um, but obviously that doesn't fall under the Department of Public Works, but more under the Department of, 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 of Land Reform and Rural Development. And certainly as government, we're saying we need to focus much le less on, on, on targets of percentages of, of land reform, and some of those are not unimportant, but much more focus on the viability of agriculture, whether it's on, you know, 
current existing farmers or um, those who are the beneficiaries of land. Is food security land important to you? Absolutely important, yeah. Productivity on a farm, is that important? Absolutely critical, of and course. And job creation? Absolutely. Of course, okay. all of those are important. And this, this, this piece of uh, uh, this draft bill um, has, has, has absolutely nothing to do with any of those things. It's not about a land grab. Um, on the contrary, it's, it's trying to say that where there's expropriation, and there needs to be certainly transformation, we certainly need to advance public interest and public purpose, however broadly we define those things, and the Constitution provides us with some guidance as to that. I mean, I think none of us can deny that we've, we're sitting with a terrible legacy from the past, and we can't just be comfortable with, with the huge inequalities in our society. Unless we sort those out, the, the, the democratic and constitutional order that we've crafted together itself will become threatened. Kom ons, hoor dan, wat is jou reaksie specifiek daarop? Freek, ek dink, heel eerste, die grootste frustratie rondom grondhervorming is tussen die gemeenskappe wat van ons stel is om my grond te gekry het en die departement wat dood eenvoudig nie hulle werk doen nie weens corruptie. 97% van alle grondrestitutie eise sal in 2009 afgehandel. 2,5% van die, van die landse begroting word my jaarliks daaran spandeer. Word daar gesê, ek bly om te hoor, Jeremy stem nie saam daarmee nie, maar dat uh, gewillige koper vir koper uh, werk nie. Jy weet, 5% van grond een jaar kom op die open mark, individuele swaard persone kan hy grond gaan koop, het sy met financiering van die staat of andersins. Waarom is dit dan nou nodig, as ons sê eindomsreg is, is, is so belangrijk, as ons sê dat voedselsekuriteit is so belangrijk, om mense te gaan onzeker maak oor waar staan hulle in termen van hulle eindomsreg uh, in, in Zuid-Afrika. Het probleem waarmee ons sit, is nie dat daar een onwilligheid is van grondeinaars om te verkoop nie. Het is nie dat daar een onwilligheid is van mense om bij te dra om Zuid-Afrika beter plek te maak nie. Het probleem waarmee ons sit is, is dat die regering gevangene gehou voor door sy eie beleid, wat eerst een swak ambtenare daar stel, en tweedens het onmoendlik volmaak om sy eie beleid uit te voer. Dit beteken uiteindelik dat die verkeerde mense word hier geteken om hulle eie foute te verdoesel. Goed, maar dat is die beskuldiging wat ek ook aan omgestel het. Net so tenslotte, want ongelukkig haal die tijd ons in. Denk jy, hierdie wet van werk kan gered word op een manier uit jou perspektief gezien? Wel, hy sal van die grondwetelike goed kan gaan toets, anders sal hy mens ook moet onderhandel met, met die regering op zichzelf voor wat om uh, daarin te verander. Maar op het einde van die dag, as die staat nie eindomsrecht beskerm nie, sal burgerlijke instellings dit wel moet doen. So, what is happening going to happen now? We have just completed the public uh, inputs process. Um, we are busy processing that. We are going to NEDLAC uh, later this month. Um, we will then revise the draft bill uh, and take it to cabinet, uh, hopefully by mid-year, and hopefully in the second half of the year it will then be tabled in parliament by the speaker for, for legislation making. So, uh, in short, public input all along the way is still still open and still still. And you'll still take cognizance of that? No, absolutely. We're and really redefine, on. because I think you yourself said if, it's need, if there's a need to actually get interpretations in the right way, absolutely. then we'll do it. Absolutely, yes. But we certainly certainly are convinced that the direction we're heading in is the right one. But no doubt there there, there are phrasings and draftings that need need sharpening. And certainly we, we will take all of the input very seriously. Deputy Minister, thank you very much. Bye, thank you, Cornelius, for your Moeilijke onderwerp hier in, maar ons so kort tijd te hanteer. Volgende week gesels ons met kleinkinders van prominente politieke families uit die oude bedeling oor hoe hulle die toekomst sien. Bijvoorbeeld die vervoerts, ne? stuur enige commentaar of voorstellen naar Robinson by kijknet.co.za. Tot volgende week, tot ziens.